All right, hello everybody. Uh, today's free paint class, we're gonna be painting Sister Chavez. Um, if you don't know who he is, just uh, do a quick Google search. Um, obviously, if you're here and you want to uh, uh, participate in this paint class, you probably know who he is, but uh, just real quick, you know, he was a labor leader, community organizer, uh, a civil rights activist. Uh, he co-founded the National Farm Workers Association. And uh, he did a lot to uh, help uh, the working people of uh, uh, Mexican families and communities. So today we're just going to be doing this paint class step by step, color by color, uh, real simple, real introductory. All you got to do to get this image is go to www.bloodlineartstudios.com. Go to the free paint class tab, scroll down, uh, save this image to your computer, print it out on your printer. This is just regular uh, printer paper that we're painting on today. And then uh, go down and get you a watercolor kit. This one is from Walmart. It was $5. Um, if you, they have them as low as 99 cents with less colors. But uh, for this class, we're going to use this color here, or this palette. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started. You're gonna, just going to need a, a cup of water for your brushes, uh, a nice flat surface, and we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, I went ahead and the uh, original photo that we're painting here was black and white, but I went through and uh, colorized it just so we can have some reference here. This picture in the back is from an actual photograph where he was uh, organizing the marches for awareness and uh, to bring uh, information to uh, workers up and down California. Um, if you're not from Fresno, this is from this is where I'm from. This is Fresno. This is uh, the area that I live in and raise my family. Um, and this is just that area uh, that he did a lot of the community work, community organizing, um, along with others that will uh, be painting later on. Um, so today, we, you always want to start with your softest colors. So today, we're going to start with um, yellow. And uh, the reason why we do that is we just... We, uh, Especially for beginners, you want to just keep our palette uh, nice and clean. Uh, we want to start with our softest colors just so we don't muddy our water. Again, these, these classes are meant for inexpensive families to get together or uh, people who don't have uh, necessities to a lot of art supplies. All you need is a printer and uh, some cheap watercolor paints. So, um, again, you know, I know this is not... Uh, the traditional way to do watercolor, you normally tape down edges and all that stuff. That's what not, not what this class is about. This is just about something real simple, something free for uh, kids and adults to do together and uh, enjoy yourself, have some fun, and learn that uh, painting is for everybody. So we're gonna start off with yellow first. We're gonna dip our water, our brush into yellow, or into water, and then we're gonna bring our brush over to the yellow uh, palette, our yellow paint in our palette. And usually you have to go back and get maybe one or two brushfuls of, of water until you really start to see your your uh, color, your water start to take hold of that yellow paint. Once you see that happening, we're just gonna come over here and I'm gonna start with just painting the middle of my sun here yellow. And if you need to get more water, if you need to get more paint, uh, that's fine. And what's, so what's going to happen is because we're using regular paper, your paper is going to fold up and wrinkle a little bit. That's okay. It's going to dry and it's going to be fine. Um, regular watercolor paper holds water so you don't get that wrinkles. Um, but again, this is just a, a real introductory course on how to uh, paint. And what we're going to be doing here uh, at times, if I pause the video or I fast forward, you can pause it any time if you need to catch up. I just, I, I'm going to run through and I'm going to do these uh, uh, areas real fast. So this is where it's going to be yellow. Okay. Now I'm going to switch. How you switch colors is you just whisk your brush into your water three or four times. And then now we're going to move to our next color. So this was a, a, like a poster board. So I'm looking at my palette here. And you just want to find the, the closest color to what paper would look like. 
not necessarily white paper, but like a tan paper. If you don't have uh, any color, you can leave it white or you can actually paint it yellow. Um, since you can print these out on your computer, uh, you know, you just print out more. You can try different things. I'm going to go ahead and go with this. Um, what color should we go with? You know what? Since some of you might be using a uh, smaller palette, I'm just going to use yellow. And what's cool about watercolors, it's, it's real transparent. So uh, the black lines are gonna show through. So if you go outside the lines, if you're a younger person or you've never painted before and you go outside your lines, don't feel like you uh, messed up your painting. And with watercolor painting, it's gonna look real blotchy, right? That's, um, I don't wanna say that's your goal in painting or what you wanna achieve to look like but uh, a lot of time that's kind of the watercolor style, real blotchy. You let the water dry as it is. So you're gonna have light and you're gonna have dark spots inside of your painting. And that's completely f fine. That's normal for uh, watercolor paints. So you can kind of see here, it's already drying. You have light spots and you have dark spots. And again, so I'm doing this real fast. Uh, don't feel like you need to paint this fast. You can pause the video at any time uh, just to catch up. And watercolor will tell you real quick if you're using too much water or you need more pigment, you need more paint. This is all just a learning process, just like anything else in life. Uh, practice makes perfect. And even as much as you practice, you're still not gonna be perfect. I'm a professional artist that do this as a living and I make mistakes all the time. And that's completely okay. So now that we have our yellow done, I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna paint this uh, outside of our sun orange here. So if you have orange on your palette, uh, if you don't, you can use red, but I'm just gonna do a, a nice little uh, gradation of, of color here. And the reason why I'm not just going red straight to yellow and then making our orange that way, um, it's, just, it's just real simple introductory again on how colors work um, and just how little things you can do with watercolor. So I'm gonna do our orange line right here. And I'm gonna go right outside to the sun here. And again, you don't have to worry about it being blotchy. Um, don't think that it needs to be all solid uh, color all the way through. You can kind of see here, uh, it's a lot lighter. And then once we get that that orange right up next to our yellow, I'm just gonna come back in with a little bit of water on my brush and no paint. And I'm just gonna kind of blend these two together. I'm just gonna go back and forth right on, right next to where the yellow and the orange meet. You know, if you wanna bring in a little bit more yellow, you can do that. And this is just gonna blend these two colors together a little bit. So now we have our sun done behind him. So now we're going to, trying to think what we should paint next. Let's do a little bit of red right outside the sun here, just to give it another, uh, another color option here. And I'm gonna use this sparingly. I'm just gonna put a, a little tiny bit of red right outside of the sun. And this is just gonna darken up our sun here. If you go outside the lines, don't worry. Again, this is just a really beginner paint. Once I have that red line, I'm gonna come back in with just water on my brush. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna mix in that orange with my red now. See how it's, it, it's getting rid of that hard line. It's softening it up. It's a cool thing about watercolors. You can always come in and just soften your lines up. So now we have a nice little uh, red to orange to yellow. Okay, so uh, what what what's next? And again, I know I'm rushing through this. I, I try to make these classes shorter so people can stay on attention span. Um, we have two ways we could do our face here. Uh, I'm a portrait artist, um, and that's mostly what I deal with. And when I do portraits, I usually, um, 
include other colors that not necessarily like in realism. But for this class, you can do one or two things. We can just paint it all one color, if that's easier for you. Or you can just break it down to two or three different uh, shades of your brown, depending on your palette. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use one shade of brown and I'm gonna use that shade uh, to build value in, in my image here. Um, the reason why I'm gonna do that, because some of you might not have uh, this watercolor kit. Um, some of you might have the, the watercolor kits that just have eight colors. And uh, so I want to I want to give people the opportunity um, to to paint this with that that watercolor kit. If you have this kit, uh, just start with your light. So your your skin color, your darker brown to your dark brown, and uh, you know that's just for more advanced. But what we're going to do now is you you need to find your uh, dark spots in the image, and then that's where you're going to put your brown. So I'm gonna use this brown here. And if you're using your eight count and you just have that one, um, if you just have one dark brown, that's the brown that you're gonna use. So just pretend I just have eight colors here. I'm just gonna use this brown. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna make some lines in his face here. We're gonna make one brown line right here. We're gonna make one brown line right here. We're gonna make one brown line underneath his chin. We're gonna make a, a tiny little line on his nose. And this will make sense once we get going here. We're gonna make another line right here on the side of his hairline. And another brown line on the other side. Now you're thinking, uh, what are we doing here? This doesn't really make sense. Um, so we're adding this color, this pigment to this image, and now we're going to drag this paint outwards and it's going to uh, leave our lights and darks. So now we're going to come in with water just on our brush. Now, again, if you just wanted to paint him all this brown color or our flesh color, you guys can be doing that too. That's why this is uh, really cool. You can just go re-download a bunch of these and then just paint them any different ways that you want. But now we're coming in with just uh, water and we're gonna spread this brown around freely on your, your, your image. And you can kind of see here, it's leaving the darker spots, but it's also lifting up and giving me these, uh, these colors, this brown skin tone in other places. So you can kind of see me now, I need a little bit more water. I'm gonna come in, get a little bit more water on my brush. And I'm going to come to this line here. I'm going to do the same thing. And we're just reactivating this brown. You see how I'm moving my brush back and forth? I'm just reactivating this brown. Coming back in, getting more water. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Moving my brush back and forth. Reactivating this brown. I'm going to do the same thing on this brown here. Now we're going to build up this value, right? If, if you if you're if you notice you're not really producing any more brown color, what we're going to do. So now there's no more brown color being moved around. So I'm just going to slowly build up this color. Do the same thing here. I bring in more lines and put a little line right here, put a little line right here and a little line right here. So if you kind of see, I'm just slowly building up this color. Now I'm going to come in with just more water on my brush, no color and just watch me drag out this color here to his forehead and more color on the other, more water on the other side. I'm going to soften this line by moving it back and forth and I'm going to bring this color out. And again on the inside of his eyes, I'm going to bring that color out. And this is all just a learning process. If you guys are having a hard time or if it's not looking like mine, um, don't feel bad. This is all just us learning together and um, just print another image out and just start again and, and, and until you learn this. So now I'm coming in, I need more brown, right? So I'm just gonna put a little bit of brown more on his chin. That's a good amount. Now I'm gonna clean this brush and get water. Now I'm coming in with just water and I'm bringing it up. 
and I'm bringing it up. Now, if your paper starts to uh, crumple up and make little specks, that just means you have too much water and uh, it's okay. It's gonna dry and it's gonna look fine. You know, maybe not use as much water. I'm gonna do another brown line because I'm running out of uh, color. Now I'm coming in with just water on my brush and I'm doing the same thing. Now this is how we kind of build value, uh, or at least how I do it. Just when I'm teaching watercolor classes in person or online. But if you kind of see here, it's, it's given us value. It's given us lights and darks to where it's not just like a comic book image of just all one color, right? So now we're gonna come in, we're gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm looking at my reference pick here. And uh, so this is a black and white photo um, that I colorized and I did two of them and I did another one with color separation. So this kind of gives me an idea of really light spots. And when I do my murals, I just know, you know, I usually break it down to three different colors and just bring from there. So this is gonna tell me where my light and dark spots are. So if I'm looking at that, I know that the inside of the eyes are gonna be a darker spot. So I'm gonna add one more little line here. I'm gonna add a little line here. I know right here on the side of his eyes is kind of a darker spot. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of, of depth right here. I'm gonna add a little bit of depth right here. Now, when I drew out these images um, for you guys to download, I kind of added a little bit of shades already on my dark spots, just so you guys don't have to worry about uh, doing too much uh, shading and, and or too much uh, adding uh, depth to your uh, painting um, if you notice there I kind of already you know I put little shades little uh, where it needs to be dark already um, and I just did that so you know you guys don't have any pressure of trying to make your guys's look uh, super realistic you know if you wanted to paint his whole face yellow with purple and blues if you guys are want to go check out the rest of my work you'll see I do that a lot with my art but if you can kind of see here, I'm just using tiny, tiny little bits of the, the brown. And I'm actually letting the water uh, dictate where my color is going to go. That's what I really love about watercolor. Um, is the fluidity of it and just the unpredictability of, of your color. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful uh, medium to use. It's great for kids and adults. It's challenging once you really want to uh, start getting more detail. And that's kind of like what I like. So his eyes are kind of done here. Um, I'm gonna throw a little bit more darkness in his eyebrows. And again, when I did this drawing, I kind of already uh, shaded out his eyebrows, but I'm just gonna throw in a little bit more color. And again, if you guys wanna stop at any time, if I'm, if I'm moving too fast, you know, you can stop the video at any time, but I'm gonna throw a little bit of brown here a little bit of brown here. And so basically what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna run through and then hit little shadows here and there. And uh, you know, sometimes you can go too far on trying to add more depth or add more uh, detail in your work. And uh, this is all just, we're learning process, right? We're learning together. Um, and that's, this is all that it takes, you know, it's just uh, practice. And uh, especially for me as a portrait artist, is just learning uh, where someone's uh, shades are gonna fall, uh, learning where the light source is gonna be and how those light source detects, uh, dictate shadows on the face. Um, paint his ears here. Now you don't have to spend, you know, if you guys just use that one color, uh, you know, you can go ahead and fast fast forward at any time. Um, but I just kind of want to just uh, briefly kind of go in here and just kind of show you how, uh, you know, detailed you can get just by using one little color. Um, again, if you guys use the uh, more than one palette, uh, obviously that makes it a little bit easier. Um, but this is just all just going to be practice for you. Um, just little things to practice here and there. And just practice up building up value where it needs to be.
I don't want to spend too much time here, um, especially for if there's any younger people um, painting with me today. But what I try to do here is, is uh, so education is really important to uh, me uh, and uh, correct education. So I think in our school systems, there's a lot of things that aren't taught um, that deal with everybody's community. Um, and this is just one of those things I want to do is uh, really let people understand who these people are. You know, we have our Martin Luther Kings, we have our, uh, you know, honoring these people, but we need to honor uh, people that deal with just all communities. You know, we have our uh, Native American act activists, we have our uh, uh, Mexican American activists, and these people need to be honored just as much as everyone else, in my opinion. Um, just because they did a lot for uh, communities that, that I'm basically involved in. Uh, so this is not just, you know, us learning how to paint together. Um, this is a time for if you're doing this with your parents, if you're doing it with your friends. Hopefully you guys can really just sit down and just uh, talk about who this person is. And uh, why he had to do it, first of all. Why he was doing it. Who he was doing it for. And who he was trying to help. And uh, just basic Google searches can help you if you, you know, if you don't know a lot about him or what he did. Um, and just learn together. So we're almost about done with this face. I don't want to go, uh, you know, I can just sit here and just try to detail this image out until it's, uh, until I'm just completely happy with it. Um, but for now, I don't want to go too, too detailed. Um, Um, and this is what this is the deal this is why I love painting so much is I'll just get so involved and then I just look up and then it's I've been painting for like six hours <laughs> that happens a lot uh, with me um, just it's it, it painting is so relaxing it's so great for uh, people to do together um, so I'm happy with this right now um, so now I'm gonna jump to this picture this one is real small so you're not gonna get that detailed, but I'm gonna do the same thing as I did down here. I'm gonna put one brown line right there because that's the darkest part parts of this image. Now I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna, uh, just with water now, so I just have water in my brush and I'm just gonna use this brown color and go right over the dark parts, right over his eyes. You don't have to worry about trying to stay inside the lines just because the, the beautiful thing about watercolor is transparent. I'm gonna come back in and add a little bit darker brown below his neck. Boom, that's done. Um, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna do a brown line, a brown line. Then I'm gonna come back in with water. And again, I apologize if I'm moving too fast. You guys can always stop this video. So I need more brown here. I'm gonna throw in a little bit more brown. I actually put a little bit too much water. Now I have too much brown. So I'm gonna show you guys a quick little trick. Toilet paper, right? So I have too much brown here. Now this is, this is not gonna uh, completely erase everything, but you can just dab it and it's gonna take a little bit of the brown away, the, the hardness of it. So if you wanna come back in with just water, move it around, move it around. And then you can kind of see that it's taking the brown away. Now it doesn't do that with all colors. Some colors are just a little too dark. But if you want to slightly lighten something up, you add a little bit of water, move it, move your brush around on it, and then dab it with the uh, paper towel. Move your brush around and then dab. And it'll lighten it up just a little bit. Uh, looks like I missed his finger here, pointing. There we go. And if anything goes outside the lines, don't get frustrated. That's 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 going to happen. And that's the beautiful thing about watercolor. It doesn't really matter if that happens. So um, now we're going to paint the uh, flag here. So we're just going to jump right into our red. And what's really important is that you just clean your brush in between uh, colors. And what you do is you just whisk your brush around two or three times in your water and you're good to go. 
So now I have three brushfuls of water of mixing it into my red. And I'm gonna start right here. And especially with red, uh, red is, is one of those colors that's bright enough, but also has some good value to where it's, it's gonna look really um, inconsistent as far as the uh, brush strokes and the darkness and lightness of that color. That's, that's the beauty of, of watercolor. It, that, don't try to make it all one uh, evenly color. That's not what watercolor is. So now that I have this red, I'm gonna come in and I'm just gonna do, and now I'm just coming in with water. And this is another way, to, if you wanna to try to smooth out your lines a little bit, you can do it like this, with just coming in with water. Afterwards, once you have that red on, just like we did with our brown. And it, it's gonna smooth out our lines slightly, just if you don't want them so uh, brush strokey and then you can bring it out. And what this does is it gives us a lot of like uh, lights to darks to, and it it really just, uh, you're letting your paint paint for you or tell your story for you. And that's another reason why I enjoy watercolors so much. So maybe on this side of the flag, I'm not gonna do it as dark, right? Maybe I kinda want it to uh, fade out, you know? And that's one thing about watercolor also, is um, a lot of time there's a lot of negative space, meaning there's a lot of paper showing. Negative, negative just meaning, you know, minus the pigment or the color or the paint. Um, so I'm gonna leave white from our paper. I'm just gonna leave it white here. Why? Because I want to. And that's the cool thing about art, is there's no really right or wrong way. No one's gonna come and tell me hey, this painting is not finished because it is finished because the artist is the one who who uh, tells you when something's done. And that's why I love art so much. So now we're going to come in here and I'm looking at his uh, shirt. And to me, it, it, it on the original, I had it kind of flanneled out, but on the print, it kind of didn't show. That's fine. Um, but I'm gonna give it, make it like a uh, what color flannel. Let's go, just the old school brown Pendleton color. So now I'm using this brown. Um, you can use any color you want. If you want them to wear a blue Pendleton, red Pendleton, um, you just make sure that your brushes are washed before switching colors. And. The color of, of the shirt that he's wearing isn't so much important as the other parts of uh, the painting. So uh, again, every part is in paint is important, but uh, you know, don't judge yourself too much if you don't have the correct color in your palette. If you're using your uh, a smaller palette, and I'm going to throw in a little bit darker uh, earth tone here just to kind of throw it off, just to kind of add a little bit of contrasting colors. And again, I, I just, you know, that's the cool thing about art is whatever brush stroke you put down, that's the, the correct one. You know, there's no mistakes. Uh, sometimes your, your so-called mistakes add to your piece. And that's just the, another cool thing about art. And uh, I'm gonna say he's wearing uh, jeans. Uh, so when you uh, when you switch to from reds to blues, I don't want to get into color theory and all that stuff. Just real basic. Some colors go together, some colors don't. That's why when your children uh, play with watercolor, you, they'll end up with just a, a, a brown mess. Um, and that's why I just say it, it's great habit to get into to really wash your brush in between each color change and to really keep your uh, palette super clean. I don't know if that's OCD on my part. I, I just really like to keep things clean. Um, okay, so his, his pants color, you know what? I'm just gonna go with this color. Maybe he's wearing some khakis or some dickies or something. Doesn't, like again, it said it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna use this darker brownish color as some shade. 
as like a, a shaded area. Just gonna add a little tiny bit to the painting, just contrasting colors. And maybe some yellow to it. So if you kind of see here, I'm just kind of adding little colors here and there just to, just to put contrasting colors into the painting. And we'll go his shirt, here, his little collar. Now we're gonna to switch to the blue. So I just wanna make sure all these reds uh, and yellows are off of my brush. And uh, so now we're gonna start, if you're using this palette, or if you, if you have a blue on your, um, your eight count, I know a lot of that times they come with just the real dark blue. If, if yours just comes with the real, real dark blue, you're gonna do the same thing here. We're just gonna do one line one line so this is where we're using the real dark blue and i'm gonna do one line here and one line there that's all that we're gonna do now we're gonna come in we're just gonna use water and we're just gonna extend that blue out and it's just just gonna give us a slight slight color change we're gonna extend that blue out so that's pretty much done again you know i'm leaving this white this negative space that's the beautiful thing about watercolor, man, is, is uh, you know, that's it looks awesome and it's gonna be finished. Now we're gonna th put a little bit of sky here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, um, we're gonna use this blue. And we're gonna do one line right around our sun. Now, if you need it, uh, go get more blue, get more blue. Kind of want to make sure it's a little bit dark. So now that I have this line here, I'm going to come up to here. So I have this blue line, blue skyline here. So now I'm going to come with some purple. And how I'm going to do my purple. Uh, let's do this real bright pinkish purple. Is um, and just in a couple areas here, I'm just gonna kind of put uh, purple. I'm not necessarily gonna follow that blue all the way around. Okay, I did these four lines, and now this I know this, this doesn't look correct, but now we're gonna come in with just water, and then now we're gonna extend this blue and blend it into this purple and extend it out. Now at any time you need to add more blue and purple if it's not mixing good, you guys can do that also. So if you wanna come in with just more blue and just mix it around your purple. So you can kind of see here this is all just learning processes for you guys and it, uh, I promise you it's a lot easier just on a uh, watercolor paper but again we're doing this as an introductory class for everybody that can uh, you know you don't really need these uh, more expensive um, art supplies to be able to paint you know you guys can paint at any time and although you know, it it's, may not work like your watercolor paper. That's completely fine also. You can even come in with red. So I'm gonna leave some of the white in here also up here I'm gonna leave this white over here and I'm gonna add a little bit more blue I'm gonna bring that down and I'm gonna leave it there and this is a little too much purple so I'm gonna come in with more blue kind of tone that down And you'll see where my paper is, is curling up. That's just because I'm overworking the paper. 
that's fine. You know, you guys, these are, you can print these out over and over and over again, and you can just practice. You can practice different techniques. Um, if you have too much water, just always finish what you're doing, finish your, your work. And then if you want to retry it again, print out some more paper and do it that way. That's why I always say, just try to finish out your work. All right, so it looks like we're about to be done. Um, you know, please like and subscribe. Um, again, the, the black here is going to be black. Um, so we'll go ahead and do that real quick. Just a real quick lesson when you're using black. Um, you want to use it so sparingly that you really barely use it. I mean, and that's just uh, for myself and watercolor. But I'm going to come in here and I'm going to do this. I'm going to use this black just like I did with all my other colors. I'm just going to put one line here. One little dot in the middle. I'm going to come in with water. And I'm just going to extend it out. Now, if you guys cut, go outside the lines, don't feel like you messed up. You want to add a little bit more just to soften that initial lineup. You guys can do that. Now, when you work on regular um, watercolor paper, you guys can really come in here and rework your, uh, your areas of color. On this one, you can't really add too much water because it'll mess up your paper just because it's a free class and we're, everybody deserves paint. I'm just going to keep selling you that. Um, so if that happens, just print out more paper. Or, you know, if you want to be more, use more black, make it more black, that's fine. But that's fine. That, this is going to look good when it dries. Um, so I hope you enjoyed it. Once again, please like and subscribe. Um, I'm always dropping new paint class, classes. Um, uh, and I'm starting an activist series that I'll be doing. Um, so... Please like and subscribe. Get this image from www.bloodlineartstudios.com to get more images for your paint classes. And thanks for tuning in.